Namaste, you're on the Nation at 5. I'm Anand Narsimhan and we start with news just coming through. More trouble within the Congress party, but this time on Chhattisgarh, there seems to be someone who's backing T.S. Singh Deo among the top three within the Congress party, within the Gandhi family. Now, we came to understand that uh, Congress MP from Wayanad and former president of the party, Rahul Gandhi, has told his close circle, including K.C. Venugopal, that they had indeed promised rotation and commitment must be kept. Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel is an OBC leader and uh, he has exercised a certain amount of clout and strengthened his position within the party. But uh, T.S. Dev may face a certain amount of opposition, but eventually everyone will fall in line. So some might and muscle behind T.S. Dev. Pallavi Ghosh, our senior editor of politics, uh, joining us. T.S. Dev said there was no arrangement the other day of a rotation and there was nothing like that and he will follow what the central leadership says. But now within uh, the, the, the top three, within the, uh, the family itself, there is a, a certain amount of understanding that there was a promise of rotation. Pallavi. And in fact, I can vouch for the fact that I remember when this whole Chhattisgarh government formation talks were taking place around two and a half years back. Mm. While nothing was said in front of the camera, but of course there was this whole talk about two and a half years rotation. Everyone was expecting that T.S. Singh Dio would be chosen as a chief minister at that point of time. But Bagheel was handpicked by the Gandhis because they were very fond of him and they felt that he would be able to deliver. Plus, he was an OBC leader. Mm. Clearly, this is something which Rahul Gandhi could not have denied. And that's what we are coming to know from our sequence of events, that there is an admission which has come in from the Gandhi that, yes, we made that commitment, and perhaps it's time to make that commitment. But, Anand, there could be huge pitfalls about it. Mm. One problem, of course, is that Bagheel happens to be an OBC leader. Mm. There's a massive outreach by the BJP as far as the OBC vote bank is concerned. Mm. In UP, in Punjab, the OBC vote really matters. So how mm. will you deal with that? Mm. Second is, Bagheel, in these last two and a half years, has not been a novice. He's built up his contacts within the party, which is why he has more than 50 MLAs parked in a five-star hotel in the national capital, mm. uh, where, you know, it's going to be a show of strength. Well, ultimately, what the Gandhis decide, they'll have to fall in line. But if you think that appointment of, say, a T.S. Singh Deo as a chief minister is going to put a lid on the troubles inside the party, I'm afraid not. But then what is the other option? Because if there is a show of strength that Bhupesh Baghel is doing, Bhupesh Baghel has also uh, tried to spearhead a lot of the Congress campaigns. He spent a lot of time canvassing and campaigning uh, in other states to for the Congress's cause. He's even willing to put in efforts once again back in Uttar Pradesh, uh, Pallavi. So what happens? Because Absolutely. He Absolutely, Anand Amade, in all of this, why blame Baghel or Sidhu or Captain? The problem lies with a floundering leadership which is confused, which doesn't know how to give the clear line. Now, for argument's sake, and before I quickly come back to you, Anand, suppose there's a rotation system mm. implemented in Chhattisgarh and, you know, T.S. Singh Deo becomes the chief minister, then there's trouble going in Rajasthan because a similar commitment was also made to Sachin Pilot. So will you follow that principle over there? Mm. Because there was a commitment made to him that he's going to be made the chief minister. Won't you then be under compulsion to do the same? Mm. And the other thing is, one is promises. Then did you work towards that uh, implementation of that promise over the last two and a half years? And the other aspect is stability. Are you going to then shake uh, what looks to be a stable, settled uh, government and from where uh, the Congress is in power? Three states where uh, they are in power and there is a huge amount of flux internally itself because of the strife and uh, the various groups that have been formed uh, within their own uh, local uh, state leaderships. Punjab, Rajasthan and now Chhattisgarh. Pallavi, thank you for your inputs. Moving on here on The Nation at 5 and we turn the spotlight towards the Afghanistan crisis where some details that have come through should send the alarm bells ringing across the world, especially here in India. And on the other part, look at the desperation of the people that despite the blasts yesterday, they are still thronging back at the airport, at the Kabul airport. They just want to get out.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is Abbey Gate. If you see behind, as the visuals will float, you would see the, the remnants of the blast from yesterday, the impact which is still there in this very region. And it's a sea of humanity back again. They are back to that very spot where more than 100 people lay dead not so long ago, less than 24 hours ago. And more than 200 people were injured, but they are back there. They are not moving away. They are saying, shoot us, kill us or evacuate us, take us out of here. That's the level of desperation that we are seeing amongst the people, the Afghan people. And then you have this cobbled up militia claiming they represent the people of Afghanistan. They have had to blast them out, hoping to clear the airport. They are saying, blast us, kill us, we are dead anyways. There's no future for us here uh, uh, in, 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 in Talibanistan. That's, that, that seems to be the spirit. That seems to be the desperation among these pictures. The pictures say it all. They know yesterday there is a blast there. They know anything can happen, but they are willing to risk it. Amidst bullets, amidst bombs, all their feeling is they want to get out of Afghanistan. Have a look at some of these ground reports. Today marks the third deadliest day for U.S. servicemen in Afghanistan. And we heard a somber President Biden speak about the attacks to the servicemen. He called them heroes and said that they are the backbone of America. And to the terrorists, he warns, we will strike back. We're outraged as well as heartbroken. <laughs> Disturbing images of people crying for help outside Kabul's airport in the aftermath of at least two confirmed blasts. An attack by a group known as ISIS-K. <clears throat> Took the lives of American service members, standing guard at the airport, and wounded several others seriously. Chaos nearby as the explosions send crowds running. U.S. officials warned of an increased threat level in the hours leading up to the attack. The word has gone out to uh, individuals, Americans, green card holders, and some others, telling them to stay away from certain specific gates. So that sounds like a specific threat to me. One explosion took place at a hotel near the airport. Another at the Abbey Gate entrance, where Afghans have gathered for the last two weeks, desperate to escape the Taliban-controlled nation. It's going to be tough getting more evacuees in. We're probably going to see an increased reduction in the numbers that are getting out of Afghanistan. The U.S. military and NATO have already evacuated thousands of U.S. citizens and vulnerable Afghans. Those efforts are set to wind down ahead of the August 31st deadline for the final exit from the 20-year war in Afghanistan. To those who carried out this attack, we will not forgive. We will not forget. We will hunt you down. And President Biden revealed that he has ordered plans to strike back at ISIS-K. Nonetheless, he says that we will not be deterred or intimidated from the mission of these evacuations. We know that there's around a thousand Americans still in the country. It's a terror trinity, ISKP, that is the Islamic State Khorasan province. You have Haqqani network, which is controlling the security ops on ground and the Taliban and uh, it's, it's all going down uh, very, very fast in Afghanistan. Afghan people themselves scared for their lives. Ambassador Pinakranjan Chakravarti, Major General S.B. Astana and Amjad Ayub Mirza are with us this evening. But first, I'm going to go across to our uh, Afghan friend who's on the phone line. We're not taking his name, but he's a journalist and he was with us last evening too, taking us through those torrid uh, developments which happened. Uh, namaste and I hope you are well. But uh, what we are seeing is Afghan people are back at the airport, at the same place where such a big blast happened yesterday, more than 100 people dead. But they are still back there because they want to get out of there. Uh, namaste. Yes, uh, you're right. Um, uh, the, at the same place today, hundreds of people they are again gathered and they're all rushed to the trying to enter to the airport and try to flee the country. Uh, the news that announcement by youth officials uh, that there would be more threat, but uh, still the people they are trying to rush to the airport and trying to flee the country. And uh, I have been able manage to talk with some of them, uh, and uh, I asked the exact question that, uh, you, I mean, yesterday the brutal attack happened in the same place. How you guys are still 
uh, well to be uh, gathered here, and, and they're only, I mean, they were saying that that is all, all, all the alternative uh, rather than flee the country or uh, my Taliban will, will kill us. So that is the, the between do and die. So we are here and we want, uh, by all means, we want to leave the country. And, uh, uh, they're not even clear about the this warning that uh, it might be another uh, attacks, uh, other attacks as well uh, from the other groups. Unfortunately, that is, that is the situation that the uh, Afghans are desperate to leave the country, and the fear and panic is in, in there, and the people are very disappointed about what is going on in the country, and they're not sure what the future will hold for them. But, but what is the reaction of the people? Who are they blaming? This uh, IS Khorasan, is it, are they connected with the Haqqani and the Taliban? Because the Taliban have condemned this, but uh, many reports suggest they are all linked with each other. They just wanted to clear the airport, so they just blasted people away. Is that true? Look, the, pro yeah, look, the problem is, uh, unfortunately, it seems the the tragedy, the tragedy is never ending in Afghanistan. Before that, uh, as you mentioned, that uh, after every brutal attacks, behind of every brutal attacks, the Taliban they were claiming their responsibilities, and then the government, the previous government, they were just uh, condemning the attacks. And now it seems the same practice. Now the ISIS or Daesh they are carrying out the brutal attacks and the Taliban's just condemning uh, for the ordinary people they don't care about who are in behind of these attacks the only I mean the concerning and very disappointing issue is the, the only the people are the victims uh, the people suffer you no know, uh, yesterday for example uh, uh, in the previous weeks or months, the Taliban were killing sex uh, brutal attacks. Now the ISIS, and it seems that, that just it's a kind of changing a chapter. But uh, no, uh, the, the, uh, the victims are the only the people. And that is, I mean, whenever you are talking with ordinary people, they're not even interested to. I mean, they are saying that's fine. We we gonna not. I mean. Uh, they are carrying uh, brutal attacks uh, with the different labels, Taliban, Daesh, and then might be in the future another groups. So yes, that's the uh, reality. But is there any change in approach on ground in terms of security? Uh, has the situation changed in terms of trying to control the crowds and also increase the security at the airport? Is there any difference between yesterday and today after the after the blast? Been, yeah, we have been able to see some uh, red, uh, uh, I mean, the special forces of Taliban, they were just there in the uh, airport and landed, and so the Taliban will keep assuring that we are gonna, uh, we are responsible for the security of the people and we are going to prevent any further attack. The, the problem is now, unfortunately, here in Afghanistan is also the vacuum of power as well because uh, yeah mm. the taliban they are controlling but there is no one i mean we don't have uh, i mean the, the leader is unknown who are controlling them and that is uh, the, the concern with the people that in the vacuum of the power uh, carrying such brutal attacks because uh, that is a, a very concerning issue and the people are very worried about about the ongoing chaos mm. Is there any administration, power, water, food, banks, police station, hospitals, uh, you know, networks, mobile networks? Uh, who's managing let me, them? Let me start. Yeah, let me start with with the hospitals. Yeah, last night when uh, personally I saw some ambulances, they were carrying out the wounded people, and we have been also confirming that uh, hmm. uh, there were. I mean less doctors in the hospitals and uh, the hospitals they were overwhelmed with the wounded and uh, there were, were not as much people to caring and about the banks the banks are still closed uh, the, the rate of uh, uh, other materials is getting raising up every day and uh, uh, the situation i mean now the people 
desperately they are waiting and they are asking for Taliban. Now they are uh, overrun and they are on control. So the main question is how they are going to run the, uh, the hmm. whole system, how they are going to govern it. That's also a kind of a very big problem because already the people, they are running out of money, the economic system that is stopped and... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, looking to the situation, if it continues like at, as it's doing now, so I'm pretty sure that in the near future, uh, we would have another crisis of, I mean, economic crisis, the humanitarian crisis, uh, where Afghan people were dealing with a different front line at the same time. Yeah. My, my final question to you, and we'll try and connect with you again uh, through the course of the evening, but uh, I just want to understand, are, who are the people blaming for this situation? Are they blaming U.S.? Are they blaming Pakistan? Or are they blaming the former government? Uh, uh, on they are blaming all, and they are blaming as well as, uh, I mean, at the same time, they are saying uh, might be the Afghan elites who are the leader of Afghans. They are, in the last several decades, they were trying to, I mean, they cannot be able to yeah. um, uh, find the solution in kind of holistic approach. And then now, and at the time being, the criticism is more on the U.S. because they are thinking, the general perception believe the U.S. abandoned Afghanistan and they leave everything behind a crucial time. And now that they are the Afghans that they should deal with all. However, as I mentioned earlier, with, with the vacuum, a power vacuum and, and the Afghan elite, some of them right. already left the country. Yeah, so that is, I mean, the whole the the Afghan elite who the, who abandoned the people the U.S. that's abandoned the people and they've left all of this for uh, this this group of militia to try and take control of uh, roughly about eighty five billion dollars if you were to go by what Republican Jim Banks said uh, not uh, just about the last evening I thank you very much for speaking with us uh, stay safe uh, by prayers and thoughts with you and the rest of the Afghan people on behalf of all of us here in India. We just hope that there is a solution that brings a certain amount of peace and stability and safety. Thank you for speaking with us. Ambassador Pinak Ranjan Chakravarti, Major General S.B. Astana and Amjad Ayub Mirza. This is the situation on ground. There is no food, there is no water, no banks. And people are back at that place of the blast site, Ambassador Chakravarti. At less than 24 hours, less than 12 hours after those blasts, they were back there saying, that, that seems to be the desperation. That's the emotion in them. Yes, indeed, it is. And clearly, they are not deterred by the bomb explosions, etc. Now, uh, the, why the bomb explosion took place, I think we've already covered all that ground. And uh, whether the Taliban foot soldiers who are out there, they obviously don't know ground control. They don't know how to manage a crowd. The police and all have melted away, those who were trained for such things, perhaps. Hmm. So really, it's it's chaos. I mean, it's chaos to the power of end. Hmm. And uh, thanks to all the hmm. stakeholders who brought it to this stage. Hmm. Now, one thing that uh, our friend from uh, Kabul uh, you know, touched upon, hmm. and I'd like to expand on that a bit, Indeed. and that is the economic crisis that is doomed. Hmm. There is no government. The banking system is down. They have appointed... Uh, governor of the Reserve Bank, mm. who is, uh, whose, whose expertise is money laundering, mm. as far as I know. And uh, and I don't know whether he's able to run uh, a modern uh, central bank for monetary policy, uh, because the skilled people have all fled. Uh, that's why the Taliban is, uh, is desperately asking everyone to come back to work. But nobody, mm. nobody trusts them. So I think uh, they're in a deep, deep, uh, you know, economic crisis. They are sliding down and suddenly you will find, I think um, parts of Afghanistan are already, uh, I think, uh, experiencing a kind of famine, mm. I think mean, food scarcity. Uh, I do not know whether Pakistan, their great friend, will will now open up, uh, you know, supply lines of food. Uh, I hope they do because uh, the ordinary children, women and men in the rural countryside they will suffer because that is, they are the first to suffer. Hmm. The other point I think we need to note is that whatever images and sounds that we are getting over the media is all from Kabul and hmm. not beyond that. Yeah. Maybe from Panjshir a few because of uh, 
Amrullah Saleh and uh, Ahmed Masood, they have teamed up and they are there. Hmm. Uh, but I think it's important that some coverage of other places are uh, also right. uh, perhaps we can get so that we get a, but, get a but chance to assess as to what is happening in the rest of the country. But the thing but is, that's what they're saying that these pictures also we will get access to only till perhaps the 31st. After that, even Kabul yes. perhaps may be blacked out and we just don't know. We may not yeah, have access yeah. to anything at all. But... Uh, uh, but but in terms of the immediate concerns, General Astana, if they can dare think twice or blink twice about bombing and killing their own people, the people they claim to represent because they want to clear an airport, I I am I, I'm, uh, I'm really, really wondering what should we be ready for now? How clear and present is the danger that stares us in the face? Uh, firstly, Anand... Uh my sympathy is with all the people who have died and the people who are suffering and the sufferings we have enumerated very beautifully and uh, I think our friend from Afghanistan has also done so. Now coming on to the incident, as far as all these terror groups are concerned, whether it is ISKP or it is Taliban or it is Haqqani, they all are the same. Today, Taliban has matured in media and matured mm. in diplomacy. They are doing good cop, bad cop kind of game because they are the ones, when they entered Kabul, they released ISKP. Hmm. Faruqi, who is the boss of the ISKP, this guy has changed all the... He was in Al-Qaeda, he was in uh, uh, Haqqani network, and he is also heading the uh, uh, ISKP. Hmm. So, therefore, all these people are all the same. Hmm. Now, Taliban has a very good excuse of deniability, number one. And number two, I am not breaking the promise, and I also... Uh, they have matured in a manner to do the media management to say that we condemn this attack. Hmm. Now, as far as U.S. is concerned, they are giving a face saver to U.S. also. Hmm. Because as far as U.S. is concerned, inst uh, they had said that if our evacuation is disrupted, we will, uh, we will uh, use full force. Hmm. But the question is, uh, they have given us uh, status wherein they can USA can clearly say that no, Taliban has not disrupted hmm. the planned uh, evacuation. It was not a planned attack. It is a suicide bomb and it is by ISKP and we will hunt ISKP subsequently as and when our hmm. time comes. So this is the face saving which US will get. But the fact is people are suffering and the epicenter lies somewhere else. Today, yes. if you try and locate the uh, location of uh, 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 Faruqi, he will be found in Pakistan because hmm. that is the safest heaven where uh, he can be uh, saved from the drone attack of United States. Hmm. So let's put it this way that they all are same. The hmm. epicenter still lies in Pakistan. Hmm. And this is a game which is, which is being played hmm. uh, to put caution and to put uh, uh, US on the back foot that they must leave and they must leave by date and they must leave as early as possible. But, uh, as the far fact as US is, is concerned... Uh, their response has to be muted. Obviously, they have got a whole lot of guys who are yet to be evacuated. Hmm. And therefore, they will have to perhaps ex uh, execute... No, they are not even evacuating a lot of people. Thousands of people who work for the US administration are going to be left high and dry. And they are all going to be marked. And that list, uh, is they, they will start working on that list comes the 1st of September. But the other aspect is this epicenter was always Pakistan. There is a Quetta Shura and more importantly, the, large, the more dangerous one is the Pindi Shura. That's what uh, you know. Uh, many experts were calling it, saying that where are you striking that out? Let's just try and understand this before I go to uh, Dr. Amjad Ayub Mirza. Why it is a huge threat for us as a nation? Why we need to be so worried about what's going to happen? This terror takeover is going to have huge ramifications for us as a country because the concerns of the ISI targeting Indian nationals remains. Those who have uh, been friendly with India, they will be targeted. And the fact is that this will come to our doorstep very, very soon. Not just what will happen in Afghanistan, it will come to our doorstep. Huge infrastructure assets in Afghanistan which now are under threat. More than 500 projects, including the parliament building where the Taliban say they will have the Islamic Shura or the Rabari Shura uh, sitting there then. Then threatens complete India-Afghanistan cutoff after 20 years. It's a key trade ally, trade route for us. And we have uh, huge interests at multiple levels. Of course, the people-to-people -people connection. And of course, 400 kilometers away from Kabul is, uh, is Jammu and Kashmir. And there is a lot of these people who have already will be moving in. Huge amount of arms and ammunition which has been carted. There is activity which is happening. Growing emboldenment and support seems to be emanating in POJK. 
and if these tanzims move it took one person to blow away 110 people at the kabul airport one person imagine what five six of them if they are able to creep into our country what kind of uh, carnage they can unleash it emboldens isis inspired outfits and modules also those are working in india that means those who went to syria who went there to work with the daesh there they are still there there are people who are operating in lone wolf systems they will try and regroup and feel emboldened and they will carry out something like this there are a bunch of crazies you just don't know what they can do we got to be on high alert dr amjad ayub mirza well you see while addressing the issue of afghanistan i think two things should be kept in mind the first thing is that all these different terrorist groups are mercenaries they are mafia they are smugglers they are kidnappers and they are proxies they are they will fight for anyone who will pay them the right money they are proxies secondly connected to this is that the solution for afghanistan is where the problem for afghanistan lies which is outside of afghanistan it lies in pakistan it lies in turkey it lies in iran it lies in qatar it lies with the americans it lies with the nato so we have to look at the broader picture now coming back to this kabul attack you know i don't think that pakistan isi or pakistani military establishment or even the taliban would have done this because it would have gone against their interest only yesterday imran khan was addressing uh, uh, a conference and he was saying uh, that uh, if the world should come to help the taliban they desperately need money because world bank has frozen uh, imf has frozen their assets and so on and so forth i think if we look at the broader picture all fingers point towards turkey because if you remember hmm. turkey is the country that was vying for winning the contract for uh, kabul airport security hmm. and turkey wants that badly because by having security contract of kabul airport turkey becomes uh, turkey controls every transit into central asia and vice versa turkey becomes the Uh, can, uh, turkey connects with all jihadi group by being inside afghanistan turkey uh, also raises its profile in nato turkey also uh, presents itself to the islamic world as a leader as opposed to saudi arabia now i think that the taliban when they refused bluntly that they are not going to allow turkey to have the uh, security uh, contract for the kabul airport that is when the saudi arabia through pakistan told the taliban that on no at no cost whatsoever turkey is going to be allowed to have the security control of kabul airport hmm. on the uh, to add insult to injury the taliban demanded that 400 or turkish military people who are in non combat uh you know uh, mm. duties should also leave by 31st of august now ice uh, kp has harassan has uh, claimed allegedly we don't know because we, we haven't heard from their representative they, uh, the media is telling us that uh, harassan has claimed the responsibility american media is telling us so this ice uh, isis has got very close ties with turkey and turkey has been funding turkey has been training turkey has been providing logistic support to isis but, inside but, turkey but, but somewhere in a some hole but somewhere what doesn't make sense dr ramjad ayub mirza is that if the taliban are averse to turkey and they don't want turkey to get in if they know that uh, iskp is something that they are against and it's not propped up by pakistan but it is propped up by turkey then why did they set them all free why did they set adil and aslam farooqi free why did they open up the prisons and let uh, let all these people out within 11 days of him getting out he's perpetrated this on afghan people and uh, 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 and now he's safely in 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 pakistan why is pakistan not weeding 
all these people out and shooting them point blank to in front of the whole world saying that we are not going to tolerate anybody who's killing innocents they are not doing this so somewhere everybody seems to be hand in glove and somewhere everybody seems to be pointing fingers at the other saying usne kiya usne kiya but so that nobody knows kisne kiya but the fact is that all of these people know all of these people know that the epicenter lies in the neighborhood and that epicenter has to be wiped out because this think tank and all of these people are not only getting sanctuary but support in a on a land where all these jihadi tanzeems are 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 found it's the same place where osama bin laden was found by the americans 10 years later so those are questions that need to be answered those are questions which uh, uh, and that's the nation and that's the problem that needs to be addressed sare fasad ki jad jo hai usko jad se ukhadna zaruri hai you it's, it's no point pruning the branches when the problem is there at the root itself and and tab tak to wo jade mazboot hai that they'll keep they, they will keep they'll keep doing it we'll take this conversation forward later to not have a paucity of time at this point uh, ambassador chakravarty general astana and also amjad ayub mirza thank you very very much we're going to take a very short break here on the nation at 5 mega scene in news 18 exclusive top nds sources telling scene in news 18 that the nds informed americans about the kabul blast have informed about the blast that hakani will carry out such blast this was also informed that hakani will carry out blast and isis will take responsibility hakani see the only solution for ending the kabul airport fiasco also most elements of isis came in kabul affiliated with the hakani networks